Welcome back to this next unit on performance evaluation. In this unit, we will discuss some simple measures for performance evaluation in regression tasks. The mean squared error is probably the most widely known performance measure. It simply takes the squared distance between the predicted value and the actual value for each observation and sums them up. The mean squared error, or MSE, is equivalent to the L2 loss. There are simply two different words for the same thing. Usually we call it L2 loss if we talk about the inner loss and we call it MSE if we talk about the outer loss. As um, we take the squared error, single observations with a high prediction error can have a big influence on the MSE. We nicely see this here in a left plot. The contribution of this left red dot is much larger um, than of the other red dot, although the absolute error is drastically larger, less, less drastically larger. The <laughs> right plot um, shows the MSE or L2 loss on the y-axis and the residuals on the x-axis. With residuals, we mean here the difference between observed and predicted value. Again, what this plot shows is that with increasing residuals, the contribution to the MSE increases heavily. Similar measures to the MSE are the sum of squared errors or the root mean squared error. The SSE is just the MSE times the number of observations n, and the RMSE is like the MSE just on the original scale of the outcome because we take the root. The next measure is uh, the mean absolute error. It is also quite similar to the mean squared error. Instead of taking the squared error, here we take the absolute error. Using the absolute error means that large errors have less, a less heavy contribution to the evaluation measure. The MAE is also something we have seen before. It is equivalent to the L1 loss. Just in performance evaluation, we usually call it mean absolute error instead of L1 loss. A similar measure that is even more robust, even less dependent on outliers, is the median absolute error. The next measure we take a look at now is the R squared. This is a measure you might already know from a statistics context. In statistics, this is usually used with the training data and then interpreted as the fraction of variance explained by the model. What we actually do is we compare the sum of squared errors of a simple baseline model with a more complex model. In statistics, we use it with linear models. There, the simple baseline model is an intercept-only model, and the complex model is a linear model with at least one covariate. If R squared is one, this implies that all residuals are zero, and our complex model predicts perfectly. If R squared is zero, this implies that we are as bad as the constant model. If computed on a training data, R squared is always between zero and one. On different data, however, it can also take on other values. In the case of overfitting, for example, we could even see negative R squared. Uh, negative R squared means that the complex model is worse than the constant model. We can take the idea of R squared and use it in contexts other than linear models. We can, for example, set up this general formula here. We can generally just compare a complex model to a simpler model. Also, we do not have to use uh, the sum of squared errors. We can use any loss, any evaluation measure for this comparison. We can, for example, compare a linear model to a nonlinear model or a tree to a forest. We can also compare a learner including with versus excluding some features. This general idea of R squared is not very widely used and pretty unknown in machine learning. The germ term uh, generalized R squared is also something we came up with. So if you discuss about this with colleagues in the field, they may not know it. We think, however, that this is a pretty useful measure. <laughs>